Hi, I'm Mara, and today I want to talk about how to bandage your own arm. I know that this is really hard, bandaging your own arm. If you can't do it, it's absolutely fine to ask someone to help you, family member or such. We're going to start with a nice clean arm that has been well moisturized, well lotioned with a lotion your skin is happy with, and get a clean piece of stockinette with no wrinkles and folds and a little bitty cut for the thumb. Another thing that I've done to get ready is put some pieces of tape handy so that I can just grab them and use them as I need to and I don't have to try to do the tape. I've also got all my materials ready to go. So we do the lotion, we do the stockinette. Next up, we're gonna do the fluffy padding, the fluffy white padding. So we've probably got a thumb hole in there already, making sure for this we're Padding up pretty much the whole arm. I am being very careful not to get on top of my pinky finger. So if my pinky ends here, I want my fluff to end right about there so that I know that I'm not going to be bandaging over my finger. I'll be very unhappy if I bandage over my finger. I get my thumb in there, wrap around again, get a little bit over the, th over the wrist, Get that thumb one more time. I'm trying to get plenty of layers of padding in all the delicate places. Now, in general, when we're looking at padding, the places that are most important is the hand up to right here, the inner elbow, and the armpit. But I am going to just use fluff as my only padding for this video. You might have been given foam to use as part of your padding. That's something that tends to be very individualized, which pieces of foam we use where. So for the video, I'm just going to use the fluff. And then in my inner elbow, I tend to wrap with my elbow a little bit bent because I find that that helps make sure, and now we run into trouble. I find that it helps to make sure that we have plenty of space in here. If I have too many layers, if I wrap with my arms straight and then I have a bunch of layers here, it really gets painful on the inner elbow with these tendons here. I'm going to use some more fluff. One thing I always tend to do when I'm rolling, I don't like to roll with the roll on the inside against the arm. I always like to have the roll on the outside. I just find it much easier. Now the technique I use for my upper arm is I'll hold the roll against my body. Roll it around, hold it against my body. Roll it around. Another thing I'm trying to do with my padding is to create a little bit of a cone shape with my arm. I want to be narrowest here and widest here, which means I need to do a little building up in my upper arm. And I forgot to do that. The dropping's gonna happen, it's okay. You just pick it up, try it again. And so I'm just getting some padding. Padding is pretty individual, depends on your particular arm. I'm just getting a whole lot in there. I think I have a pretty decent cone, so I'm going to start wrapping. I'll fold this over just so it's tucked in neatly. If I have any foam, this is when I would start putting my foam in place. And now we're going to start with the bandages. For all of these bandages, we want to make sure that we're using a light amount of very consistent tension. I don't want it ever floppy, but I also don't want to pull it as hard as I can pull it. Just a little just a tiny little bit of compression there. Starting it out is definitely the hardest. I started out wrapping once around my wrist, and then I'm going to be wrapping twice around the knuckles, once below the thumb, twice, once, twice, once, until I'm almost done. So for getting started, there's a couple of techniques we can do. One that I like is to just hold it in place with my fingers. When I come around the second time, and I cover it up, now it's not going anywhere. Just having it covering itself a little bit does that trick. So now I'm gonna come up to my hand, I'm gonna keep my fingers widely open, and I'm also gonna keep my roll very close to my hand, so I have lots of control over the tension. That's once, 
and twice and down. Coming around, anchoring below the thumb and doing it again. Coming up once, coming up twice, and I'm gonna change it. We're gonna get a little attention to the inside of the hand, so I'm gonna come down this way. Wrap it around. Oh, I'm keeping everything flat. Coming up once, coming up twice, and down. And I'll do this one more time from the back. Coming up once, coming up twice, and down. And I always want to finish up in the arm, not by the hand. So now I'm going to start spiraling. Always keeping it smooth and spiraling and spiraling. So now I'm out of bandage. I'm going to hold this in place with my body, get one of my prepped pieces of tape, and just pin that down so it doesn't go anywhere, and now I can move on to the next one. So that was my smallest bandage. Now I take my medium-sized bandage. I'm gonna start this one up by the hand and start working my way up. The two ways I can start this, one is to try to hold it, the other is to say, that sounds difficult, and so I will just use a piece of tape to hold it in place. The reason I don't do that for the first one is that, whoop, and that'll happen, it's okay, we just fix it. I don't like to tape bandage to fluff because the fluff just doesn't hold tape very well. But taping bandage to bandage tends to work pretty well. Sometimes you have to give it a little bit of a press to get it to hold. And now here I go, wrapping around my hand, my hand, and now I'm starting on my forehand, for, forearm. So I'm going to put my hand in a fist to make my forearm as big as it gets and start spiraling. You also want to pay attention to how your forearm is rotated. Usually I like to keep it kind of in neutral. If you do a ton of typing, you can have it a little bit more palm down. But usually neutral is a good place to be for being able to do most of the things you need to do. Really depends on how you use your arm once it's wrapped. And I keep on unrolling and spiraling, unrolling and spiraling. Something to notice as I'm doing this is the spacing of the wraps. I'm trying to keep this fairly consistent spacing. And I do that because the number of layers controls how much pressure I have on my arm. And I wanna make sure that I have, I'm going from most pressure to least pressure as I work my way up. So it's important to be attentive to how your layers are going. If you don't like it, if you don't think you did a good job, you can always back up, put it back on again. And I'm gonna keep working my way up, keep working my way up. So now I'm getting close to my inner elbow. I have a decision to make. I can either keep going the way I have been, which is fine, or I can do a little protective X in my inner forearm. And I only do this the first time, but I'll show you the protective X. So I go up in a crisscross, bring it up, anchor it around my upper arm once. I did not get this high enough in my armpit, oops. Grab it again, and now I do my crisscross down. And the reason I do that is because I'm trying to avoid having it do a lot of bending and having anything digging into my palm. So if I want to keep my elbow still, I can now start using my thigh as part of my one-handed techniques. And then once I get as far as it gets, get my prepared piece of tape. I can't see it, but I'm kind of going by feel. Tape it down, and that's the second bandage. We're getting there. Now I take my third bandage. I'm gonna do this the same way, where I start. 
pinning it in place, make my fist, starting at the wrist, and I'm still trying to aim for fairly even spacing. Working my way up the elbow. I know I'm making this look easy. I'm using my dominant hand and I have years of practice and even I'm dropping it sometimes. So it's okay if this is really hard. It's okay if you drop it sometimes. That's so common. And we just keep spiraling all the way up till we get to the top. And then we I have a little bit extra, so I'm just going to keep it smooth, angle it down slightly. And we're going to do the last ones the same way. Now the trick I usually use to save on tape is just cover it. If you can manage that trick, great. If not, use the tape. There's lots of tape in the world. Keeping my consistent spacing. Now you notice that I'm never letting the bandage flop around and that's partly because I'm trying to keep the consistent tension on it and it's partly because I don't want to drop the darn thing. So I always want to either have it in my hand or pinned between my arm and something else. You can use a table, you can use your leg, you can use the side of the couch arm if there's something nearby you. Whatever's convenient, whatever's handy. Just trying to get my very tippy top there. And I have definitely got too much at the top. So rather than going around and around and around in the top, I'm going to sharply angle it down. You remember how I said that the number of layers means controls the amount of pressure? I don't want to have a whole lot of extra pressure at the top, creating a tourniquet effect and blocking flow. I always want to be going most to least. So I'm just going to hold that in place there. And it means that I probably have my layers a little too far apart if I had that much extra. So for the next one, I'll just make my layers a little closer together. Get my little, oh, keep my fist in place. And I'm just spiraling around, keeping my consistent tension, keeping my consistent spacing keeping my elbow in about the same place so I don't have a whole lot of wrinkling. Although if I end up with about a bunch of wrinkling, so it goes, it's gonna happen anyway. Trying not to have a whole lot of extra folds. My hand is getting tired, so if you need to take rest breaks during this, that would make a lot of sense. And then, oh good, I ran out at the very tippy top. I win a prize. So I'm just going to hold that in place. Get my tape. Pin it down. Use a couple of extra pieces of tape to really hold that. Fold this on down. I definitely did not get it quite as high as I would have liked to. I would have liked to get it about here or so. But I did pretty good. I'm gonna just kind of squeeze it, make sure there's no spots that are super hard or super soft, and then I'm gonna help myself bend it a few times, make sure I've got my mobility, make sure I can bend my wrist, make sure my fingers feel good, I'm not going numb. I did it, self five, thanks.